A Touch of Heaven That Became Reality is a, is a talk that I gave at my mum's memorial just a few days ago on Thursday the 29th of September. And as I expand on this message, I just pray that the Lord will be able to minister to you during this extended message that will allow us to appreciate the love of our Heavenly Father. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We come into your presence. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come into our lives and tabernacle with us. Tabernacle with us to show us your great love that you have, not only for us, but all that are called by your name. And for your purposes, we ask that they are able and willing to hear what you are saying during the season. Lord, we know that uh, the testimony that we give cannot exceed the testimony of your Son, Jesus Christ. So we ask that our small testimony, as well as the truth that remains, is what is, st is, is remaining in those that hear this message. We pray this in your glorious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, so on Thursday when we shared our last goodbye with Mom, uh, just talking about the wonders of our Lord and also the love that she shared, Proceeded with a journey that, that started with me many years ago, back in 2009, and coming out from the UK to South Africa for my grand's funeral, standing behind some family members who were worshipping so loud that I questioned why that why would they worship so loud at a at a funeral, at a place where one should be mourning. And that got me set on my journey of, of discovery, faith, and also the. Uh, the conviction that came to me even back then, appreciating that uh, the death of a loved one was by no means something uh, to, to, to be joyous about, but knowing that the, the joy would come in the morning. But the questions remained with me, and the trials, and the temptations, and the fall, and the tribulations, as well as leading to the cross, was something that I journeyed through. And that song that I heard for the first time, Years later, probably about four years later, from a separation, I came to that uh, song which was played and I'll attach to this message of Oceans. That song was played with the pastor and driving in the car and just playing the song and it just impacted me. But enough about my little journey. I just want to talk about mom's journey as well as our own journey. Our own journey to the cross, our own journey from the cross as well as our, our journey to our in eternal inheritance that's uh, vitally, vitally important for us. As I mentioned to my mom and to others, our time on earth is literally the size of your nail. And the time spent with our Lord, if we choose to accept Him, is for eternity. And just something that happened during the passing of my mom in the weeks leading up to the testimony that she shared, after which came a time where time stood still. Our clock in the lounge stopped working on a number of occasions, even though we replaced it with a new battery. Still didn't want to work. But anyway, that was perhaps maybe the Lord saying, the time, my time, is still, be still and know that I am God. But mom's life was filled with great journeys and paths of a, that brought many, many tears of joy, sorrow, celebrations, trials and tribulations of her own. The life celebrated through her outpouring of love and from those who went before her. The end of her first marriage caused mom to bring up my sister and I for a season and with the assistance of the church. Very important that. Her second marriage to Kit, uh, dad, who adopted myself and my sister, later having two more siblings, brother and a sister, to complement our new family. The growing external family of those that we now met were uncles and aunts and cousins from the new marriage. We had aunts and uncles with their, as I said, growing families, as well as lifelong friends which were uh, very close and dear to mom, even in a work setting or just a social setting. But remembering mom's journey brings back such good memories and uh, laughter, lessons and appreciation of her wisdom drowned in love. Her, t her testimony, which she shares with my dad, our 42 years of marriage, 
is one of just that, a testimony how marriage can hold society together, even with its ups and downs. I want to open up on a Proverbs, which came to mind quite often when I, when I thought of mom, and also thought of all those wives out there, and um, how important a virtuous wife is. Who can find a virtuous wife, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. And she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands, and she is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar, and she also rises while it is yet night, and provides food for her household and a portion on for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys, buys it. From her profits she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arm. She perceives that her merchandise is good. That her lamp does not go out by night, she stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out to her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits amongst the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens up her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruits of her hands, and let her own work praise her in the gates. Speaking of women of eternal significance, and this is going into the woman in God's design. In God's design, a virtuous woman not only cares physically for her household, but she's also a watchman over the emotional and spiritual condition of her family. Tespa which is the Hebrew word for watches, is a translated watchman. She works willingly with her hands, two kinds of which are mentioned in Proverbs 31. Kaf, which is symbolizing upturned hands extended in prayer, and Yad, which is ministering in the serving hands. Confident in the God to whom she prays, the effective woman knows she has eternal significance. She's blessed. What does blessed mean? Strong's Accordance 833, which is happy, blessed, prosperous, successful, straight, right, and contented. Its original meaning is to be straight. Note the use of the word in Genesis chapter 30, verses 13. Leah gave birth to a son and said, I am happy, for the daughters will call me from a shah, meaning happy one. Both the Messiah and the nation of Israel will be called blessed. By the whole world. Men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall come and call him blessed. And all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land. Doesn't this explain the significance of women in God's design as well as men? But how important it is for us to come back into right relationship with our Heavenly Father. So that he may be doing a good thing in and through each and every single one of us. Back to my mom who dedicated herself to her husband and, and children through thick and thin and joys and sorrow. One so busy she drove right past me coming to collect me from tennis, having to do a repeat, come around the block and come again. There are many family experiences that we shared. Perhaps Sunday lunches together with the family, the individual time that she had with each of the loved ones that she held dear to her heart. What about the annual local and international holidays? There were Skippers, there's Kruger, Cape Town, Drakensberg, Delstrom, and Port Alfred, to name a few. As well as the, the holidays in abroad, you know, England and Scotland and Spain, Portugal, as well as uh, Christmas in South Africa and New Year's spent in the bush with the grandchildren. What about the Partnoster holiday? exploring the nature that she so loved and multiple fishing experiences in Matakula and Linsklip 
in Dalstra. But this was the sacred family time that she had all these years, but especially at the end in Port Alfred, which was to be her last celebrated birthday here with us on earth. Mom fought the good fight. She was devoted to her family, and even though the one marriage didn't work out, didn't change the love and care that she had. Through those many challenges and celebrations, perhaps maybe the birth of her own children, or perhaps those of the grandchildren that came about, or maybe the life with her second family at the school that she served at so faithfully for 21 years, and even when they were going through the challenges, they used to make a plan. She got the name Nanny M from her eldest uh, son, her eldest grandson, who wasn't able to pronounce her name Gran, and there birthed her, her name that followed for many, many generations to come, as well as decades, Nanny M. There was sadness when she had to go through the, the heartache of saying goodbye to her children and the family with, with them going overseas to spend time away but there was always a plan that was made to stay connected she went through a divorce and these separations as well as wedding celebrations that allowed the happy times to overcome the disappointments she also loved dad and even though she was quite stern with her instructions and perhaps maybe being one of the queen that we loved so much which included perhaps maybe mo moaning at dad when he used to put holes in the plastic uh, of the food before putting it into the microwave. Dad's patience and love and endurance is a testimony in itself. But she had to face that hard, hard fight, that, that, that fight, that good fight that she fought so bravely. This was cancer. And as she acknowledged the fact that she had cancer in the end of 2019, we went away as a family to Sedgefield and just uh, celebrated the, the family that, that we could have with us. But it was the journey at the beginning of 2020 that not only rocked the whole world with its lockdown, but rocked our family with the news of this cancer. But with this, we walked this journey side by side, whether near or far. We were there for her every step of the way. Learning great lessons of humility, endurance, perseverance, as well as grace that humbled us. Knowing that the witness of this faith of hers towards her eternal inheritance was something that we were contending for, standing in the gap. But this is where the touch from heaven became the reality. A couple of weeks before she passed away, the witness of this touch of heaven was evident. There was a negative report on the 6th of September that was very concerning. Not only from the lady who did the sonar, but just things that followed shortly after. And there was prayers, as there always had been, and great miracles that came in the form of praying against liquid going on her lung again after she had to go back in a second time to have the liquid drained. And through our connect group, we managed to pray into that. And thanks to the Lord, that part of that uh, healing journey was complete. There was no more liquid in her lungs until the day she passed away. That was just a little under two years ago. But there was a prayer that we prayed over mom because we weren't sure if she was on her way to heaven that, that night and that morning. We were certain that she was. And as I said goodnight to her, I shared how much I loved her and she gently squeezed my hand. Going to bed, being very concerned, not knowing if she would wake up in the morning, knowing that when I did wake up she wasn't fully awake but still in a very very deep but peaceful sleep we prayed over her life and I asked the Lord to give me a, a verse and he gave me that that verse which I'll share in a second I just want to go to 1 Timothy that allows us to appreciate the value of consistent prayer and also the good confession that we may have in our Lord Jesus Christ I'll read verses 11 and 12 but you O man of God flee things that pursue and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Gentleness is a strong accordance word 4236, which is a disposition that is even-tempered, tranquil, balanced in spirit, 
unpretentious and that has the passions under control. The word is best translated meekness, not as an indication of weakness, but of power and strength under control. The person who possesses this quality pardons injuries, corrects faults and rules his own spirit well. And how did mom do that so, so peacefully? The weakness that she had well, turned out to be the strength that the Lord worked in and through her life. Let's go back to this testimony that we want to share with uh, Mum. It's about the everlasting love and the everlasting life. Revelations chapter 14 gives us a little bit of a glimpse of this before we go into the scriptures that came to me. And it speaks of seeing another angel flying in the midst of the heavens and having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Word well, Strong's Accordance 166 tells us that it's an unchanging, unlimited duration, an eternal, age-long, and unending. The word may denote that which is without either beginning or end, without beginning without end. This is the love that the Father has for us. So mom not being well, a couple of days prior to that day, on the 6th of September, the 4th of September, I had to come home urgently because she wasn't well then. I took her to a tree, or close by a tree that was called the Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow, and went and plucked out just a little branch and put it on her lap. And just reminded her how Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. That negative report that I spoke of earlier about her condition and the struggles that she had on the 6th of September, just two days later. Mom went to bed, you know, not knowing if she would make that night. So the 7th of September, the, the, the daycare nurse and myself, we prayed, asked for those verses that uh, the Lord gave us. We prayed in the lounge, asked for, we asked for wisdom knowledge and discernment and then applied that faith and went into the room and prayed individually to the Lord the Lord gave me Psalms uh, chapter 23 which was a wonderful wonderful psalm and I read it and as I read it I realized that the Lord was definitely working with her which was a confirmation of what I had thought first three verses that I read awakened my spirit to the confirmation that he was with her, which was a confirmation of what I had previously. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters and he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And as soon as I read that he leads me besides the still waters, that was without a doubt the confirmation that I needed. Yet, if you take it one verse further, Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When we're going through these difficult times, it's a verse like that that not only uh, allows me to know, or allowed me to know that he was working with it, but it was a verse for me to comfort me. Strong's Accordance 5162, which is to comfort, to console, to extend compassion. Sigh with one who is grieving to repent. Nasham originally may have meant to breathe intensely because of a deep emotion. In some references, the word is translated to repent, and the idea being that regret causes that deep sigh. And its sense of comfort, Nasham does not describe casual sympathy, but rather deep empathy. It is like weeping with those who weep, or actually sighing with those who sigh. From Nahum are de uh, derived the names Nahum, which is comforting, and Nehemiah, which is the comfort of Yahweh. Just speaking to someone this morning about Nehemiah, and how important Nehemiah was in his conviction that he was doing the will of God. But it also in this context brings about the comforter, who allows that restorative plan, broken heart, loss, grief, a comfort that surpasses all understanding, which we know is from the Holy Spirit. Anyway, 
So I shared this with the uh, daycare nurse and I expressed to her the verse that was given to me and she said, I've got this verse. And this is taken from Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20. Now may the Lord God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. When I read that, I knew that there was a, a similarity between the verse that I had and this verse that she gave me. Brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead and restoring the soul in Psalms. But straight after that, knowing that God provides everything necessary for our spiritual and well-being through the atoning work of Christ Jesus, the covenant that he inaugurated, the eternal covenant, made me really, really grateful, hearing, discerning, and being obedient. Her beautiful spirit gave me another verse, the daycare nurse, which was Hebrews chapter 13, verses 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So not only had I had that revelation and confirmation, but this was just another verse from the Lord himself saying, I'm with you. Now the daycare nurse didn't know about the tree that we had uh, taken from the yesterday, today and tomorrow. And I quickly called her outside and I just said to her, this is the tree just two days ago, or three days ago at that stage, that I'd given to my mum for her not being too well. And reminding her of the fact that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. The same Christ who sustained the leaders mentioned in verses 7 will support them. And then it took me to verse 7 and it says, remember those who rule over you. Who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. When we have a revelation from our Lord, it's just that glimpse that He gives us. It's that partial reality of the eternal completion when we keep pressing in. Because the day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And when we appreciate that that is available for us all, not only for my mother who was nearing the end of her life on earth, gives us that hope and that future that was prophesied back in Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11. But it does tell us that we've got this walk of faith that we need to journey on and continue with when our loved one has gone. Let's have a look at the walk of faith which is taken from the end of Hebrews. The walk of faith is a glorious process of becoming increasingly free in Christ. By faith in Jesus' resurrection, we became free from the fear of death. Through faith in Jesus as our high priest, we know that we have no one, sorry, we have one who understands our temptations and can help us as we become free from sin. By faith in Jesus' holiness in our lives, we can be free to boldly enter into God's presence without hesitation. Continue to put our faith in Jesus daily, knowing that we can entirely trust Him, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what does Hebrews invite us to do? Understanding that Jesus had destroyed the power over death, as in this case with mum, and as in our case with sin. It releases us from that uh, bondage of the fear of death or sin and take hold of that faith in, in freedom. So what do we do when we feel tempted or overwhelmed when a loved one's gone home to be with the Lord? Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus and be strengthened and encouraged and comforted through His Holy Spirit. We can also welcome the conviction of the Holy Spirit through God's Word that allows us to grow. Perhaps maybe in the conviction of sin, through God's mercy we can appreciate His love for us. Or perhaps maybe even leading to the forgiveness that we thought we couldn't forgive. This leads to freedom. So come boldly to God's throne of grace. Giving us the opportunity to speak freely with Him about anything that is concerning us or on our hearts. Understand that Jesus is, he knows the beginning from the end. And he's there for us all, day by day. But we can also learn 
not only about the faith of those that have just gone home to be with the Lord in their journey to the eternal inheritance that was so bravely taken through courage and through humility, but we can learn the lives of the heroes, both in those that we love and also in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Faith is a confident assurance of what we hope for and proof that we of things that we cannot see. It's just saying to someone this morning again, Hebrews 11 is a great passage of encouragement that helps us during these times. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And when we appreciate this, we can look to Jesus, our rock, our eternal salvation. The one who began and will complete the good work in us, in our faith, in our, in our hope, as well as the love which I pray will continue for current and future generations. We are to embrace God's training, whether it's through discipline, revelation, equipping, and appreciate that it produces peace and righteousness. So well, let's put our faith in Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, come to the cross. Find out what his love is all about. Does it mean it's going to be easy? No. We've just been through a, a passing of a loved one who battled cancer for two years. But we still prayed and interceded. Because why? He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Now seeing this radiant angel being my mom throughout her life, but especially after her testimony, that touch from heaven allowed us to appreciate Hebrews chapter 13. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's just go to Corinthians. Chapter 12 speaks of the uh, different uh, gifts that we have, but unity through the diversity. And having the diversity and unity in one body, we can appreciate that there's something called the greatest gift. And I'll let you read through the greatest gift, which speaks of having love, regardless of our circumstances or what we possess or own, or what we give away. What counts at the end is the faith, the hope, but the love. Love being the greatest. If we hold on to love as we have been designed in God's image, being love, it allows us to come back into his covenantal relationship with us. So when we let love come alive, it's a great kingdom dynamic that allows us to remain steadfast and unified in him. All non-biblical liter liter literary efforts to define love fall silent before the Apostle Paul's magnificent hymn of love. It is a description of Christ and the love he enables us when he comes to indwell us. This passage will come alive if you read it in three ways. Number one, Read it as Paul wrote it. And then number two, put the word Christ in place of the word. The word is love. If you put Christ in that place, read it again. And then the third thing that I'd encourage you to do is read the passage also as a prayer for your own life. That the virtues of love will be manifest in you. The miracle of Christ's indwelling power is that the love he revealed is exactly the love he will con communicate to others through us. When this quality of love is the basis of a relationship, the miracle of unity is possible. So when we make love come alive, we can see this in the loved ones that we have. Mom's life it was an example of his love. And in, an example of the virtuous wife, sharing his love with others, strangers and those that she knew. Even those little kids at school calling her Nanny M, just until she had finished up her time at, at her second family's home. She was always hoping for the, the future generation, hoping that there would be a better generation going forward, with the faith in all circumstances allowing her to beat that final thing. That final thing that we're all going to have to beat one day. That final thing called death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 and 52 speaks of our final victory. 
Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. A moment. What is a moment? Strong's Accordance 8.23 is to compare atomizer and atomic, uncut, invisible, undissected, infinitely small. The word is a compound of an un and ten mass which is to cut in two. When used of time, it represents an extremely short unit of time, a flash, an instant, a unit of time that cannot be divided. A second can be calibrated to one tenth, one hundredth, and even one thousandth of a second. But how do you calibrate an atomic second? Christ's return will be that atomic second. So what does it say about mom's time going to be with the Lord? What was mom's and our final victory? For this corruptible means, oh sorry, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption and this mortal has been put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? That speaks of a great thing that awaits all of us, to those who are loved and are called according to his purposes, and those outside his covenantal love at present. You have an opportunity to come back into his everlasting love. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, speaks of the way, the truth, and the life. Let your, not, let your hearts not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. But then Thomas was a bit doubtful. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how... We know the way. But Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This opens up a divine opportunity for us to give our lives to the Lord, say yes to his covenantal promises and plans and purposes that he had for us even before we were knitted together in our mother's womb. Speaking of mothers, the song that I heard first play in 2013 was a reminder of something so eternally important. Through the waves and through the storms and through life's challenges, the oceans that go up and down and threaten to destabilize us. When we walk on the water, as Peter did, we keep our eyes fixed on him, and through all circumstances, he will be there with us. And this came to the, the time of mum's closing the last chapter of her life knowing that she was going home to be with the Lord not, not knowing when because no one knows the day or the hour but that song played as we were choosing the songs for her memorial her own memorial after her packing her clothes that she would like to wear once she had passed and it allowed us to appreciate just worshipping just celebrating and that ocean song came on and I played it up and I went to pick mum up and just spontaneously we started dancing, even for a, just a short while, perhaps maybe 30, 40 seconds. Unbeknown to me, my sister was recording it and I've played that on, on uh, for some people to, to see. And that song that played was the song I heard nine years ago. Not appreciating and understanding the significance of that song that would come nine years later having that one final dance with mom before she went home to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. So as I shared with a tear on Thursday how that last song was so important and how it will remain impregnated in my heart until we dance again in heaven, I came across another verse which is of encouragement that allows us to know that there's a future. In Revelations chapter 21, Verses 1 to 4. 
Let me read the verse and then I'll share another testimony in closing. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. And there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he wrote and sat on the throne, on the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. The testimony that I wanted to share with you as we close off today, and it's an invite for others who are still with us. About three, four years ago, I had it on my heart to take the family into the, into the Holy Land, into the Promised Land, due to circumstances which included the cancer as well as the, the lockdown, prevented us from making that journey. But appreciating that perhaps maybe mum may not have made it into the physical holy land. She's made it into the eternal holy land. And when I read that verse about making all things new in the new Jerusalem, it gave me that extra peace knowing that she has been the first to experience in our family, our immediate family, the new Jerusalem. So as we close this message off today, I invite you, if you'd like to go physically to the Holy Land. It would be a great opportunity, privilege and honor to be able to steward that moment with you. And if you would like that to happen, take that step of faith. Start that step of faith, that journey that will continue for eternity. We don't know the day or the hour, but we've got a choice to make. And the choice that I pray you make will be one that will last for eternity in the kingdom of God. Having a glimpse of the revelation and testimony of my mom who's shared her wonderful experience of her th uh, heaven here on earth, bringing heaven down to earth, which is what we prayed for. Sharing the beautiful trees, the wonderful flowers, the flittering birds and the still water that she called a pond. Giving us a message, an eternal message that it's available for us all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We appreciate that uh, our dear mother is home with you. And we thank you for receiving her back into your loving arms and giving her, giving her a taste of heaven. And then making it reality when you've taken her home to be with you forever. Lord, we ask that this gets extended to not only our family members, but those near and far from us, friends, colleagues, and those that we love and even those we don't know. Bring them into your covenantal arms, your relationship, your plans and your purposes so that you may be glorified in all things. We pray for the future generations. We pray that this nation will be a nation after your own heart, Lord, and that we may be able to steward what you have given us, using our gifts that you have given us in diversity as it was and is and will be as it is, your Son, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, having different giftings, but being unified in Christ Jesus. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Right. I pray that this extended message will bring comfort, will bring healing, and will bring the eternal reality that's available for us all into our earthly reality. Our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I'm sending you love and we look forward to seeing you on our healing midweek Wednesday. Sending love. <laughs>